All right, let's go ahead and move on to Iowa here. And um, a new poll that came out uh, that is pretty interesting in terms of where the Republican race is at. Let's put this up on the screen from Steve Kornacki. Um, the very latest here, go ahead and put the poll numbers E1 up on the screen. So Trump is basically the same, 43%. Um, doing just fine and dandy there in Iowa. Uh, DeSantis, not doing so well, dropped down three points to 16%. He's now tied with Nikki Haley, who has surged 10 points to 16%. Um, she was the big mover in terms of this poll. Next is uh, Tim Scott at 7%, Chris Christie 4%, Vivek Ramaswamy 4%, Doug Burgum 3%, and Asa Hutchinson at 1%. But a lot of people noted, if you dig into the data, one of the things that was interesting here is while Vivek has remained static, uh, in terms of his overall percentage mm -hmm. of support, his favorables have taken a massive hit. Put this up on the screen from Dave Weigel. He says his Iowa's fade is notable. No change in overall support since summer, but negatives way up from 20 to 37%. Biggest jump in unfavorables of any GOP candidate. And uh, Sagar, I saw our great friend Marshall yes. making uh, <laughs> some phenomenal points about this. So basically like, the more he did podcasts and the more people got to know him, the less they wanted to know him. It's probably, I, I wonder how much of it is podcasts. I wonder of it how much honestly came off from the debate and just the, uh, the uh, what did the Gen Z's call it? Pick me syndrome. Mm. It's like being a pick me girl or a pick me guy. Mm. Uh, people have accused me of being a pick me guy before. I really? I vehemently reject um, said analysis. <laughs> but the, my point is that I believe, I believe that that is the way that the vernacular would apply as in trying to put yourself at the center of attention. Um, um, there are a couple of mistakes. The biggest mistake I think that he made is it's clear that the second lane in the Republican Party is not to be a Trump defender. It is to be like the moderate it girl, which explains Nikki Haley, Haley. which is, look, the vast majority of Republicans support Trump. Um, the vast majority of Republicans support Trump-like policy and all of that. But there's a small little percentage which doesn't. And it's clear that that small little percentage likes old GOP. So the bet by DeSantis, by Ramaswamy and others was that this number two lane could exist where you are somehow a Trump alternative, but you're supportive of Trump. But it's just very clear that if people want Trump or anything to do with him, they're gonna pick him. For people who want DeSantis, it's still gonna be the vast majority of people who may feel affectionately about Trump, but wanna move on from him. And then that left, whatever group is left, those are just gonna be very traditional Nikki Haley style suburban Republican voters, the very traditional, you know, a small business owner, pro-Israel, mostly boomers, let's be honest. And she's like made in the lab, I think, for them. So at the end of the day, I just don't think his political lane existed. I'm not even quite sure how much any of it had to do. I just think that when his unfavorables went up, it's gonna be really amongst that group of who the only people who exist who are anti-Trump or even up for grabs, like that's who they are. And of course they're gonna find anything that he says repellent because he's a, such a big defender of them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's there's a lot right. to that. I think you're also right that that first debate, which yes. he, he was very divisive in, and some people liked it, and clearly a lot of people like it didn't sit well with them. And mm -hmm. he even kind of uh, showed his hand when in the second debate, he came out and was like, I know a lot of people think he, that I'm like a know-it-all smartass. <laughs> he right. yeah, like he's... gave up the game That's of, right. I got some feedback back and y'all really didn't like that much how, how I was. And he tried to sort of be more subdued in that second debate. That was a tell that under the surface of the initial positive reviews, there were some problems. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of Haley, just to you know, make the case for some possible Trump alternative, which you guys know I have never really believed in, but I'll go ahead and try to make the case. You just had Mike Pence drop out, DeSantis is fading, does he ultimately drop out? You could imagine a coalescing basically around Nikki Haley yes. before you get to the caucuses. And Trump support is pretty solid. 63% of Trump supporters say their minds are already 100% made up and they will definitely back him. But, you know, that means 40% of them are still kind of in the market and shopping around and considering. And if you have this huge coalescing around Nikki Haley from all of the other candidates and a lot of media outlets, who knows? Maybe. I Again, I don't really see it, but you never know. That's the best case I can possibly make for her. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.